The most exciting moments in a scientist's life occur when you get a result that defies your expectations. Whether you're a theorist that derives a result that conflicts with what's experimentally or observationally known, or an experimentalist or observer who makes a measurement that gives a contrary result to your theoretical predictions, these, Eureka, moments can go one of two ways. Either they're harbingers of a scientific revolution, exposing a crack in the foundations of what we had previously thought, or, to the chagrin of many, they simply result from an error. The latter, unfortunately, has been the fate of every experimental anomaly discovered in particle physics since the discovery of the Higgs boson a decade ago. There's a significance threshold we've developed to prevent us from fooling ourselves. 5 Sigma, corresponding to only a 1 in minus 3.5 million chance that whatever new thing we think we've seen is a fluke. The first results from Fermilab's Muon G2 experiment have just come out, and they rise to a 4.2 sigma significance, compelling, but not definitive. But it's not time to give up on the standard model just yet. Despite the suggestion of new physics, there's another explanation. Let's look at the full suite of what we know today to find out why. What is G? Imagine you had a tiny, point-like particle, and that particle had an electric charge to it. Despite the fact that there's only an electric charge, and not a fundamental magnetic one, that particle is going to have magnetic properties, too. Whenever an electrically charged particle moves, it generates a magnetic field. If that particle either moves around another charged particle or spins on its axis, like an electron orbiting a proton, it will develop what we call a magnetic moment, where it behaves like a magnetic dipole. Quantum mechanically, Point particles don't actually spin on their axis, but rather behave like they have an intrinsic angular momentum to them, what we call quantum mechanical spin. The first motivation for this came in 1925, where atomic spectra showed two different, very closely spaced energy states corresponding to opposite spins of the electron. This hyperfine splitting was explained three years later, when Dirac successfully wrote down the relativistic quantum mechanical equation describing the electron. If you only used classical physics, you would have expected that the spin magnetic moment of a point particle would just equal one half multiplied by the ratio of its electric charge to its mass multiplied by its spin angular momentum. But, because of purely quantum effects, it all gets multiplied by a prefactor, which we call, g. If the universe were purely quantum mechanical in nature, g would equal 2, exactly, as predicted by Dirac. What is g2? As you might have guessed, G doesn't equal 2 exactly, and that means the universe isn't purely quantum mechanical, 